Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. Geeky is sitting this video out. She will be back. Trust me, she, she always comes back. I'm a very lucky guy. She always comes back. So we're going to talk about digital journalism. We're going to talk about the media and we're going to talk about implosion. Vice, Vice is going bankrupt, apparently. Uh, Vice, once valued at $5.7 billion, is headed for bankruptcy. This is the new normal. Uh, BuzzFeed shut its newsroom down a couple of weeks ago because it wasn't sustainable. Vice has been having financial problems for years. Uh, in fact, Disney lost more than $400 million on Vice back in, in 2019. And uh, they've been trying to find a buyer. Nobody wants to buy their garbage website. Uh, we did a video yesterday talking about Waypoint. That was their video game outlet, podcast, website, whatever. They shut that down. Of course, the mantra of those cats was F capitalism and go home. Well, capitalism F them over because nobody wants to pay for this website, right? And we're reaching the end of the line for digital journos. Before we go any further, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Private Internet Access VPN. It's dangerous to go on the internet alone. Here, take this, a VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network that protects and encrypts your sensitive data like passwords. It also hides your location so internet bad guys can't get a bead on where you're at. Or if you prefer, you can change your virtual location to get past region locked content on say your favorite streaming service. Paying for a streaming service but only being able to access a fraction of the content is like going to a restaurant and only getting samples. With PIA VPN, you can stuff your face with TV and movies from all over the world. So Rick and Morty is unavailable in the US, but if you change your location to the UK, using private internet access, it will immediately be available on your Netflix account. You can use one private internet access subscription to protect an unlimited amount of devices at the same time. All the content you can binge on and an extra layer of protection to keep prying eyes off your data. You really can't afford to surf without a VPN these days. Check out PIA VPN now at PIA vpn.com backslash clownfish by clicking on my link in the description you get 83 percent off on private internet access that's just two dollars and three cents a month and you also get four extra months completely free again that's pia vpn.com backslash clownfish thanks to pia vpn for sponsoring this video now let's get back to it um you know vice in particular man they've really gone hard uh, gone hard at uh, nerds. Uh, they did this hit piece. We covered it last year that they were attacking manga and attacking manga creators and basically saying, basically saying that all manga was uh, underage drawings, P word, uh, when it was not. And they really uh, took some liberties with the video. They had their journalists going down into some basement manga store, manga shop, and they blurred out a lot of the images, implying that they were lewd images, and they were not. And, um, you know, then at the end of the video, they begged for money. <laughs> so it's like, geez, if you're going to beg for money, beg for money at the beginning of the video. Now, I can't say anything. We have a thing at the end where you can support us, but we're not we're not begging. It's just nice if you want to support us. But, um, yeah, this is, this is going to be a really interesting year. Um, and I had some thoughts on this. I am back on Twitter for a couple of days. I'm still trying to feel out whether or not uh, I want to stay on Twitter. I think it is a huge time sink, but right now I'm kind of, kind of taking the opportunity to gloat because we've been calling this for the last three or four years now that all of these websites were going to implode. And all it took was the money running out. So we're going to talk about that before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. Uh, Geeky's not here, so I'll give you a woohoo. You get a woohoo if you, you click the subscribe button. So here's what I think is going on. And it's kind of kind of early in the morning here. So I'm going to gather my thoughts, right? I, I think I said before, I was an actual journalist. I, hashtag actually journalistic. And uh, none of these websites were sustainable. I know what the ad rates are. Uh, they were basically dipping into venture capital to pump the sites up. Um, to get the valuation up, to have some big media company like Disney or Universal or, you know, somebody come along, some sucker come along and buy them out. The end goal was never to run a news outlet. It was never to be a sustainable 
news outlet. From my vantage point, again, it might vary slightly from outlet to outlet, but as I understand it and as it looked to me from the outside, this was kind of a pump and dump type situation. If you've seen the WeWork documentary, the purpose of WeWork was to basically inflate the valuation so some idiot would come along and buy you out for billions of dollars. And that's what BuzzFeed was doing, and that's what Vice was doing, and that's what Vox is doing. And none of these websites are worth it because the ad rates are terrible. And a lot of their traffic, I think, was bought. Either they boosted a lot on, on Facebook or just bought it outright, you know, and um, they really don't have anything. You're a, you're a news aggregator, and a lot of the journalists you have working for you are garbage cheer journalists. You don't have any, like, IP or anything. Now, Vice does have, you know, some TV shows and stuff like that. They do documentaries and and that sort of thing. And BuzzFeed had, you know, what, the Try Guys? Yeah, that, that worked out so well. That kind of imploded, too, right, and tasty. But there's, like, nothing you have that's worth billions of dollars. You know, you don't have the reach. I don't think any of these websites ever had the reach they claim. They're like, oh, we got so many views. We got, I think it was all, I think it was all a sham. I think it's going to come out later when actual journalists look into these websites, you know, five, 10 years down the road, when somebody does a postmortem on Vice, doing a postmortem on other, other people and other websites or whatever, when somebody does a postmortem on these websites, they're going to go back and look and realize that the whole thing was a shell game. It was never real and uh, it was never sustainable. And again, I knew this and I'm not really that smart. <laughs> I mean, I do OK, but like I, I looked at this running the websites we run and we run a couple of uh, smallish, uh, smallish pop culture sites. And I looked at this and I'm like, there's no way in hell. There's no way in hell they're making the kind of money that they're claiming they're making. Uh, there's no way in hell that they're getting the traffic. They claim to be getting because like even in Google search, it's like some of these sites would not even come up on page one. And so I think they were heavily reliant on social media to uh, circulate their content. And I think they were heavily reliant on Facebook to boost and Twitter to stir the outrage to drum up views. But even on Twitter, a lot of these articles on these websites did not get a lot of interaction. Um, and I think what's going on now is because Elon Musk tossed a hand grenade into Twitter, it upset the entire journalistic ecosystem. And that's a good thing because this needed to happen. This thing has been pumped up, artificially uh, driven with venture capital for the last seven or eight years, you know, and Elon Musk came along and bought Twitter, which is a critical node, right? He basically bought Twitter where all these journalists would congregate. They would try to lock things down. Uh, they would they would drown out any voices, competing voices, and they would give the illusion that their opinions were the correct opinions. And this is what Americans, this is what the world actually thought. And we're finding out that is not the case at all. It's not the case at all. So now we've got all these journalists lamenting about how they're going to be out of work. The poor journos, the poor journos who are writing hit pieces on people and, uh, you know, dunking on, um, you know, anime fans and gamers and for years. And they didn't have to worry about the consequences because there was a surplus of money and now it's, it's gone. And what's going to happen is these people aren't even going to have a platform. Twitter was their home base. They, they went all in on Twitter. These journos, the hangers on, uh, a lot of the super fans that, that, that read these websites. Twitter was their home base and it's gone now. Elon took it and they're not going to pay for a blue check because they look bad if they do to their peers, right? And they don't want to give Elon money because they're pissed. And the thing is, is Elon has already said that blue checks are going to get preferential treatment on Twitter in the algorithm. So their stuff is not going to get seen. And we have so many of these outlets like we're not going to pay for a gold check. So we get fine. Don't you're going to you're going to get obliterated and i think a lot of the the bot accounts have been purged this is why i think when you go out to the twitter feeds of a lot of these websites you're not seeing a lot of interaction because i think a lot of the interaction was fake it was all fake it was all a game to get some sucker to come along and give them 5 billion dollars for a garbage website that's that's absolutely positively not worth it um 
you know, and there's going to be no place else to go for these people. There really isn't like you believed a lie for years. You thought that you were again, Lois Lane, you were all Rita Skeeter. And now you're angry. You're angry because you were told that you were the future of journalism and, and freaking, uh, independent bloggers and YouTubers ate your lunch and there's nothing you can do about it now. It's too late. You, you needed to build a life raft years ago when people like us, not to be a dick, but when people like us told you that the end was near, that all it's going to take is one financial hiccup and the whole thing is going to collapse. And, and here we are, guys. Here we are. So this is coming from the New York Times. Let's get into it. Vice. Vice is said to be headed for bankruptcy. The company, which was once valued at $5.7 billion, has been struggling to find a buyer this year. Remember Mike? That was another one of these, these websites. Uh, it was supposed to be worth billions of dollars and it sold for like 5 million bucks. And I don't think anybody's using it or reading it or anything. Um, remember Tumblr? I mean, Tumblr, my God, Tumblr, Tumblr was worth a billion dollars at one point, And it sold to WordPress for $3 million. An individual could have bought Tumblr. Like you could just cut a check and say, here, I'll buy Tumblr. You know, it's either Tumblr or a house in California. I'm going to buy Tumblr. I don't know why anybody would buy Tumblr, but uh, it still exists. So Vice, the brash digital media disruptor that charmed giants like Disney and Fox into investing, they did. And again, Disney lost $400 million on it because they wanted Vice to be their mouthpiece uh, before a stunning crash landing is preparing to file for bankruptcy, according to two people with knowledge of its operations. The filing could come in the coming weeks according to three people familiar with the matter who weren't authorized to discuss the potential bankruptcy or on the record. Now, here's the thing. Just remember, with bankruptcy, doesn't mean you're going out of business right away. It means you're trying to get your shit together to either sell off or go out of business. But it's not good. It's never good to go bankrupt. The company has been looking for a buyer and still might find one to avoid declaring bankruptcy. More than five companies have expressed interest in acquiring Vice, according to a person briefed in on the discussions. Uh, the chances of that, however, growing increasingly slim, said one of the people with knowledge of the potential bankruptcy. Uh, I'll tell you what, the money's run out. They can't dip into venture capital to go buy Vice. And I think what's going to do it for them, what's going to be the kill shot, is that they're going to look at the numbers. They're going to really do a deep dive into Vice's numbers. And I think they're going to find out that the traffic is not what they were claiming it was. Right. I think they're going to find out so much of the traffic on so many of these websites was bought. It was bought traffic. It was not organic traffic. People were not organically going to your website. You had to push them there. You had to drag them there. You had to trick them to go there. Or you just found a bunch of bots to go there. I, I, I think they will find a substantial number of eyeballs on these websites because nobody's really on the streets talking about, or just read on Vice this thing, unless it's to dunk on them. And it's the same with all these other pop culture sites too, these gaming sites. I think that's why they're shutting down because I think a lot of the traffic is fake. Um, and I think they're going to find this out, which is going to lower their value tremendously. A bankruptcy filing would be a bleak coda to the tumultuous story of Vice, a new media interloper. Of course, the New York Times says that. that sought to supplant the media establishment before persuading it to invest hundreds of millions of dollars. In 2017, after a funding round from the private equity firm TPG, Vice was worth $5.7 billion. But today, by most accounts, it's worth a tiny fraction of that. In the event of a bankruptcy, Vice's largest debt holder, Fortress Investment Group, could end up controlling the company, said one of the people. Vice would continue operating normally and run an auction to sell the company over a 45-day period with Fortress in pole position as most likely acquirer. Unlike Vice's other investors, which have included Disney and Fox, uh, Fortress holds senior debt, which means it gets paid out first in the event of a sale. Disney, which has already written down its investment, is not getting a return. Vice Media has been engaged in a comprehensive evaluation of strategic alternatives and planning, Vice said in a statement on Monday. The company, its board, and stakeholders continue to be focused on finding the best path for the company. Shutting it down is probably the best path for the company. Vice began as a punk magazine in Montreal more than two decades ago. Okay, so let me... I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. Okay, um, so many of these websites, so many of these websites that blew up into like new media started out kind of punk. 
Uh, I'm talking like comic book resources. I'm talking about, you know, so many video game sites, uh, Giant Bomb, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They started out fan powered, fan run, small, anti corporate to some level, and they could give honest opinions. What happens is these people sell out. These people sell out and then they have to become part of, part of the machine. They basically become part of the machine. And the only way to survive, I think, uh, on the internet going forward is going to be that you're going to have to own your own shit. Now, I love this. And yeah, I'm going to call this guy out because what the hell? What the hell? I'm, I'm feeling saucy. This is Grant. Uh, 18 plus he, him, actually, hashtag, actually autistic. Um, saying, that, ew, because apparently we got tagged or one of our articles got picked up by this Twitter account, uh, saved you a click. And uh, this guy's very angry. Ew, Clownfish TV, those fandom menace jokes of journalists. Uh, they're not anything, says Elvik. Elvik's been around for a long time. He's been watching us for a long time. Um, oh my God, look at all your toxic Star Wars, Star Wars videos. And you were... You were on a you were on a podcast with a fan, fan menace person. Um, oh my god! Ah, ha, ha. This is coming from critical. Okay, this is oh fuck right off. <laughs> this, is, this person's ridiculous. That's coming from this is coming from uh, some hit piece of some soldy podcaster journalist Raylo. Um, oh god, what was it called? Rewriting Ripley. Um. So anyway, this guy is angry that we exist. And uh, I said, sorry to inform you of this random anime avatar pronoun person, but we'll probably still be around after most of the sites you read shut down. Hashtag actually journalistic. Um, yeah, we will be. We will be because we're small and we're nimble and we uh, have actual fans and we didn't have to resort to the tricks that Vice did, you know. And they got too big. And this is why individual YouTubers do better because they have a direct connection with their audience. Even, even groups that have, I'm not talking about the fandom menace, but I'm just talking about like uh, news outlets or podcast networks or whatever that are small enough to be manageable. In fact, I think Rooster Teeth is a prime example of why you don't sell your company to a corporation. Uh, Rooster Teeth would still be in pretty good shape, I think, if they were independently run with the original crew. But now that they're just part of a corporate thing, they have to do what the corporation says, and they need to make a lot more money than they would have had to just to pay the salaries of the people they have working for them. Vice blossomed into a global media company with a movie studio, an ad agency, a glossy show on HBO, and bureaus and far-flung world capitals. That is your problem. Disney, after investing hundreds of millions in Vice, explored buying the company in 2015 for more than $3 billion. Should have taken that deal according to the two people familiar with the conversation. The deal never materialized and because Disney realized it wasn't worth it. Disney was going to buy Twitter at one point, too, and they didn't do it because they said, yeah, it's too toxic. We don't want it. Vice eventually succumbed to a bearish market for digital media companies. The company has been trying for years to turn a profit, but has consistently failed to do so, losing money and repeatedly laying off people. Last week, Vice told employees it was closing Vice World News, a global reporting initiative that covered world conflict and human rights abuses. The closure of the World News operation was a blow to employees who saw the division's aggressive coverage as in keeping with Vice's roots in gonzo journalism. Uh, yeah, actually, Vice started out pretty reputable, as I understand. I think Tim Pool wasn't Tim Pool part of Vice. I think he was part of Vice uh, originally, and then they just kept, went off the rails. Um, as it has sought a buyer... In recent months, Vice has dealt with turnover in his leadership ranks. Can't imagine why. So yeah, uh, this is this is a mess. Uh, this is a mess, guys. And look, this is the end of this type of website. Okay, uh, I think I think Elon Musk buying Twitter was an accelerant. Uh, there already was a dumpster fire raging, and now with him basically disrupting the supply chain by purchasing Twitter and not giving preferential treatment to sites like Vice, you know, Vice, Vox, all these other Kotakus and Polygons and all that. I mean, we're seeing, God, we're seeing Nintendo. Nintendo is not sending games to Kotaku anymore. They've effectively blacklisted Kotaku. These companies are turning on these websites because these websites aren't worth it. 
They're not worth it. They had everybody convinced that they were the voice of this generation. And the reality is, is nobody reads this shit, especially when they go out of their way to antagonize uh, fandoms and they go out of their way to antagonize their audience because of politics or whatever the deal is, instead of just reporting the news or having varied opinions on different news topics. I think it's fine if you have a, a website that has political opinions all over the spectrum and you've got people writing all over the spectrum, right? I'm not talking about that spectrum, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that that is fine uh, and that's what needs to happen, but that is not what's actually going on. You basically have everyone in lockstep, same opinions, same talking points, all these journos talking to each other. So you got a whole bunch of these new media outlets gaming the entire media ecosphere. Everybody was convinced for years that the opinions that came from the vices and the voxes and the buzzfeeds and the polygons and the katakus were the correct opinions, the only opinions. And if you had any dissenting opinion, well, you got put on a list, right? You got put on a list like uh, uh, this dude here uh, is, is pointing out. We got put on a list, uh, which is so funny because these journos would go out of their way to attack people in discords, attack people using all accounts on Kiwi Farms. You know, uh, we're, we've been privy to it. We know the deal. And it's basically they're all freaking the hell out because their websites are not sustainable. And you're going to see Kotaku and Polygon fall. I think you're going to see Anime News Network get gutted. It just got sold. And the people working there, for some reason, think that they're going to continue to work there indefinitely until they decide to leave. And I can tell you that is not the case. So all these websites that have been causing all kinds of problems for this country and for fandoms in particular, are going to get gone. They're going to get snapped away. And we're going to have to start over. And I think we're going to see the internet roll back to about 2008, 2009, when individual fans, individual gonzo journalist reporters started their own websites, built their own audiences. And, uh, you know, they weren't all in lockstep. Everybody had a different voice, a different flavor, and that's fine. Um, that is absolutely fine. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on this. I think this is the, definitely, definitely the beginning of the end of all of this bullshit that we've been dealing with for four or five years. Go out to clownfishtv.com. Go out to clownfishtv.com where you'll find objective, objective news and opinions, not just us. Um, and also if you feel inclined, if you feel inclined, and I'm not begging, if you feel inclined, you can support us. Um, you can go to the reef.support. We're trying to grow things. Again, we're trying to grow things organically, not with an infusion of venture capital or any of that crap. And we want to keep it real. And that's what people want. That's what people want. So I think we will outlast a lot of these websites uh, for sure. So I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to the reef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's the reef.support.